Hi, uh, welcome back. So today I just want to give you an update on the on, on my Miracast project regarding the audio portion of it. So I got audio working. So I'm just going to show you how it's working uh, right now. So again, it's already paired up. I'm simply using the cable to keep charging my phone because it turns out Miracast is actually uh, uh, takes quite a hit on the battery life. So let's go. <laughs> So I think that's that's enough. Alright, so let me just lower the volume. Okay, so uh, so there's just a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, right, so the actual audio support was actually fairly straightforward. Uh, the actual signal is just uh, or the data on, on, on across the wire is just LPCM in order which is raw data. So there really isn't any encoding associated with it. It's just 48 kilohertz raw data going through the pipeline. Uh, the only thing or the, the gotcha for me was, I think the phone is sending out big Indian data and then the Pi only supports little Indian. So I need to do a bit of Indian conversion on all the samples that are received. Um, but aside from that, things pretty much just worked as is. Um, right, and as you can probably notice, the frame rate isn't exactly top notch, right? And and I, I look at the Android open the Android operating system source code for 4.3 at least, so which is exactly what I'm running. Um, it only supports 720p running at 30 hertz. Um, I think again I haven't actually checked the code, but I think in previous revision of the Android operating system, uh, it, I think they allow 720p at 60 hertz. Don't quote me on that. I think I need to check that. Um, I'm assuming that they only support 720p at 30 hertz for 4.3 probably for battery reasons, right? As I said, this is this actually eats up quite a bit of battery power and then the phone gets pretty hot. Um, right, in addition to that, uh, as you, you see the video being played back, there's a bunch of decode errors every so often. So there, that's a limitation to the current implementation right now. Um, I think it's either CPU bound or memory bound. Um, so I need to investigate that a little bit more. Given that you can do a file playback at, 1080p at 30 hertz. I'm pretty sure the system can actually handle the load. It's just that um, there probably are better optimization that I can do to the system to make it go even faster. So another thing is uh, right uh, UDP and TCP. So I, I briefly look at the the Apple AirPlay on official specification, given that it's not actually officially released. Someone, another fellow on the internet has reverse engineered a protocol. So the AirPlay is predominantly TCP based, whereas Miracast is UDP based. And the difference being between the two is that TCP uh, allows the endpoint to request lost packet, which results in a smoother playback, supposedly in a lossy network environment. And, but what you do get Oh, or rather what you don't get with TCP is usually the real-timeness aspect to it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is a design goal for Miracast uh, that they care more about uh, the real-time interactive portion of of this specification. That's why they opt for UDP because I'm guessing this is, since this is for screen mirroring application, it's probably more interactive focused and stuff like that. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, in a UDP based system, when the packet is lost, it's gone. Um, you just you can only hide it in the endpoint. So by nature, uh, I think the, the TCP based AirPlay protocol will be smoother simply because it allows buffering, whereas Miracast does not. But in, on the other hand, Miracast is more, more real time, right? So that's the benefit of it. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is Right, I, I, I got asked a couple of times how to actually set this up. Um, this, unfortunately, is not exactly beginner friendly to set up. I haven't quite figured out. I do want to release this as an app eventually, but I haven't quite figured out what the right strategy is to um, to approach this. So first of all, on the Pi, you need a a, a hardware-specific uh, Wi-Fi dongle that supports Wi-Fi Direct. On top of that, you need to find a driver that supports Wi-Fi display specification. 
So for, for this TP link dongle that I got, I was fortunately to able to find uh, the driver associated with it. Uh, so I could just make it work, no problem. Um, in addition to that, you also need to set up DHCP server on the Pi because the first thing after the Wi-Fi direct connection is established between the phone and the Pi, uh, the phone will request for an IP address. So you need to set that up on the Wi-Fi interface as well, in addition to enabling Wi-Fi display support on the dongle. Then after that, then you can start doing the control path and the data path stuff, right? So um, I'm not quite sure how to automate all that process, I suppose. I mean, I, I know it can be done, but it's just it wouldn't be just another app that you deploy on the system and just make it go. So um, so yeah, so I'll give that more consideration. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, but as you can see, as you can see, even with the current implementation, with the um, either memory or CPU bound limitation, uh, the performance is pretty good. Oh, another thing I wanted to point out is if you simply do uh, audio only decode, so so if you do just you know uh, audio playback, if you just listen to music on this with no video payload, uh, the performance is actually really really good. Um, uh, it's it's as if it's a wireless uh, speaker, right? So um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, thanks. See you next time.